close to ending, but the last thing I'm going to do is read aloud some student evaluations. I, I have found over the years that some students like me, some students don't like me. I don't know how to make this point any clearer than to share with you a sampling of the uh, student evaluations. These are not actually from last spring, but they're typical enough that I was too lazy to make some new quotes. Quote one. So these are actual quotes from former actual students. One. The lectures were clear and followed a very logical order. Two. I thought the class was not always organized. Three. I thought it was a very well organized class. Four. Overall, I was unsatisfied with this course. Few substantive conclusions were reached. Five, along the same vein, I think he should avoid saying at the end of each segment of the class, ultimately, you'll have to decide what to think for yourself. <laughs> I should end the class by saying, you will believe. Okay, actually, I started the class by saying that. You will believe what I believe. Six, it might be improved by presenting other views better and more objectively, since Kagan always ended a particular line of reasoning by defeating the argument if he didn't agree with it. He could be a bit more unbiased and tolerant of other perspectives. <laughs> Seven, lectures were sometimes repetitive or obvious, but occasionally they provided new insights. Eight, I know that some felt the pace of the arguments was a little slow, but I felt that this was generally necessary, not only for the unphilosophy savvy population, but also to cover all points. Nine, extremely thorough and thoughtful, receptive to questions, brilliant. I like that one. <laughs> Often long-winded. <laughs> 10, he does go around and around the same idea a number of times, which does cut down on the notes for the class, but it can get a little boring. 11, Though I've heard students say he often repeats himself, I think this is a merit in a philosophy course in which arguments and thoughts can quickly become confusing. Twelve, Shelley Kagan is a fabulous, resourceful, utterly convincing lecturer. Thirteen, he would work through arguments right in front of this. This one actually, I like this one because I think this is what I at least aim to be inside my head. Here's what I'm doing. 13. He would work through arguments right in front of us, which then helped me work through them on my own. 14. Shelley is an incredibly dynamic lecturer. 15. He's just in his own world babbling on and on. <laughs> I'd zone out with regularity. <laughs> 16. I have to say that Shelley Kagan is probably the best lecturer I had in my four years at Yale. 17. He's the type of teacher you either love or hate. Now that's pretty clearly true. I, I wish there were some easy litmus test that I could just give you so you'd know which of you would be making a mistake taking this class. I don't know how to give it to you. Next topic. Grades. One. He tried to intimidate us too much with his promise of impossible grading so that everyone took the class credit D fail, when we all probably ended up with A's or B's because grading was not hard. Two, I recommend it, but only credit D fail. <laughs> Professor Kagan is harsh with grading. Three. When Shelley says he's the harshest grader on campus, he isn't lying. I was consistently surprised by how poorly I did on papers. <laughs> the standards in this class are just different from all other classes. Four, Kagan's reputation as a harsh grader is unfounded. If you put in the effort, the grade will reflect that. So that, you know, that settles the question, am I a harsh grader or not? Now, as you know, the last question for the evaluations is, should you take the class or not? Would you recommend it to somebody else? One, I believe this class is one of the most mind-opening experiences of my life. Two, no, it's a waste of a course. <laughs> Three, it gets kind of depressing at times, <laughs> but I suppose that's due to the nature of the subject. Four, this course stands out as one of the more unique 
and stimulating courses I have taken at Yale. Five, excellent class. It made me think about life and death in a new way. What more can you ask for from a class? Six, I would not recommend it. The class just seemed to be a platform for Kagan to throw out random ideas, and the students were never required to engage in any thought. Well, that clears that up. Let me end with actually just a couple of other quick remarks. One, these are some of my all-time favorites from previous years. One, not doing the reading didn't hurt me at all. Now, I, of course, these are anonymous comments. I don't know who wrote this comment, but I do know this. Whoever wrote this remark is an idiot. <laughs> who, whoever wrote this remark seems to be under the impression that the point of being at Yale is to spend $40,000 a year of your parents' money and get away with learning as little as possible. Well, for those of you who want to try it, you probably could pass this class and maybe even get an OK grade without doing the readings. There's no final exam. But still, it's crucial to understand doing the readings is an important part of learning what this course has to offer. Different quote. Kagan is a self-righteous little man. <laughs> now, i got to tell you, that bit about being little, that really hurts. <laughs> Another one. Great course. Wonderful professor. Fascinating subjects. It's the deepest thinking I've done in my life. Final quote. This class taught me how to think more than any other at Yale. I don't know whether I pull it off. Pretty obviously, for a number of students, I don't manage to pull it off. But that's at least what my aim is. I'm trying to help you think. I welcome you, and I hope you'll be back on Thursday.